tectonic hazards. Nepal, 2015. The Gorkha Earthquake. Introduction. The aim of this nugget is to demonstrate how the effects and responses to a tectonic hazard have affected a low-income country, or LIC. The understanding of this case study will enable a detailed comparison between tectonic hazards in LICs and those in higher income countries, or HICs. The location of Nepal. Nepal is located in Southern Asia, in the Northern Hemisphere. Nepal borders India to the south and China to the north. The development indicators are the evidence we use to determine whether a country will be considered a higher income country, an HIC, or a lower income country, an LIC. This table compares Nepal on the left to the United Kingdom on the right. For example, this data shows us that Nepal has a Human Development Index ranking, according to the World Bank, of 143rd in the world, compared to the UK's 18th. This evidence together suggests to us that Nepal is a lower income country, or LIC. Key information. The Gorkha earthquake in Nepal took place on the 25th of April 2015. It was a strong earthquake with a magnitude of 7.9. Its focus where the earthquake originates was only 15 kilometers in depth, meaning this was a shallow earthquake. The boundary type was a collision plate boundary or converging plate boundary, where the Eurasian plate meets the Indian plate. The epicenter, the point on the surface above the focus, was in the Gorkha region of Nepal, 80 kilometers northwest of the capital Kathmandu, where the majority of damage occurred. Beginning with the primary effects of the Gorkha earthquake. Primary effects are the direct impacts of a hazard event. They usually occur immediately after the event. In the Gorka earthquake, these included 30 seconds of violent shaking, felt as a result of the shallow focus of the earthquake, 9,000 people died in this earthquake, as well as 20,000 being injured, largely from falling debris and damaged buildings. Many buildings were destroyed, including homes. Infrastructure was badly damaged, including electricity and phone lines. 7,000 schools were destroyed, affecting the education of an estimated 1 million Nepalese children. Damage estimates were around $5 billion, including damage to UNESCO World Heritage Sites, such as royal palaces. Secondary effects Secondary effects are the indirect effects of a hazard event, caused by primary effects. They often occur in the hours or days following the event. In the Gorka earthquake, these included blocked roads as a result of landslides caused by the initial earthquake, 19 people died on Mount Everest Base Camp in an avalanche that was caused by the earthquake, homelessness occurred due to thousands of homes being damaged or destroyed, the Kali Gandaki River was blocked by a landslide. This created a flood risk for nearby villages and towns. There was an increased risk of disease in displacement camps due to contaminated water and poor living conditions. 1.5 million people were at risk of food shortage due to damaged infrastructure, limiting food supplies to Nepalese citizens. A loss of tourism occurred, which Nepal relies on heavily for its economy. This was due to the damage to infrastructure, particularly transport links. Moving on to the responses. Immediate responses. Immediate responses are what people and organisations do about the event in the days straight after it occurs. In the Gorka earthquake this included people who had to clear rubble with their hands in the first 24 hours due to a lack of government help. The Nepalese army sent nine helicopters to rescue people, which meant many people in remote villages couldn't be rescued. $450 million was received in aid from across the world to Nepal. Teams from the UK, India and China came to help and support the Nepalese army alongside a number of other countries. 500,000 tents were needed for shelter and for field hospitals to be set up. Social media was used to support search and rescue efforts. The long-term responses. Long-term responses take place months or years after an event and aim to return life to normal. For example, roads were repaired, 
to support the movement of aid, food, water and other supplies to support the Nepalese citizens. Landslides were cleared and floods were drained. Homeless people were rehoused in new homes or their own homes were repaired. 7,000 schools were repaired or rebuilt. In July 2015, tourism returned after some major tourist sites reopened. And in August 2015, Mount Everest reopened to climbers after repairs were made to Everest Base Camp and trekking routes were re-established. Analysis Nepal is identified as a low-income country, or LIC. This has an impact on its ability to prepare for tectonic events, such as the earthquake in April 2015. Nepal was hit by a strong magnitude 7.9 earthquake, which damaged homes, an estimated 3 million people were made homeless, schools and education, where around 1 million children's education was affected, and infrastructure and communications. Roads were blocked due to landslides, which had a secondary effect of preventing the access of aid, food and rescue equipment. Nepal had a poor immediate response and recovery, as demonstrated by the citizens who had to remove rubble with their bare hands, the lack of resources such as rescue equipment, vehicles and personnel, and the requirement for aid from higher income countries or HICs to provide vital support in the recovery effort. Nepal lost its tourism for many months, an industry it relies on heavily. This further reduced the chances of a fast recovery.